Welcome to a bit of a variation on a quick play in that it's still just going to be me, a babbling mess, talking to the microphone, but I'm going to explore a selection of games of a particular genre for the Mega Drive or Genesis if you're in North America. And that genre is first person shooters. Now this is a genre which I am enamoured with. I've been enamoured with it for, for years and especially getting first person shooters to work on inadequate hardware. That's sort of my, I don't know, it, it, I, I'm, it just excites me. It excites me that you can get stuff like that to work on older hardware. And the Mega Drive has a few first person shooters which are of varying quality and it's even got some first person sections in inside other games which aren't first person shooters in themselves. In 2006 there was even a Doom Genesis project or at least there was speculation of a Doom Genesis project. Of course it runs on the 32X but some guy named Alex had a site on GeoCities and he was making out that he had created Doom or was creating Doom for the Mega Drive slash Genesis but it turned out to be an absolute fake. It was just 32X images which he'd edited to 64 colours and looking back with hindsight it seems fairly obvious. So we won't cover that but that's an interesting side note. So let's get stuck in in chronological order with the first real first person shooter on the Mega Drive. And to be clear what I mean by that I mean 3D first person movement which is not pre-computed and is typically from the eyes of the observer. So we begin this list with a little known game outside of Japan. It came out in 1990 as a Japanese only release and it is a port of an NEC PC-88 game. It's called Star Cruiser and it's pretty advanced really, especially for the hardware. And you have to remember this was before anything that id produced, before Hover Tank, before Wolfenstein 3D, any of that. So. Let's get stuck in. This is actually a, a hack of the original ROM by Celsion, which adds English language because otherwise it is all in Japanese as it's part RPG and that makes for some tough gameplay. Look at these graphics, they are literally interstellar. If you told me this was done on a Mega Drive, back in the 90s I probably wouldn't have believed you because a lot of games like this were exclusive to Japan. It's almost Star Fox in its elegance. So we're heading towards Earth. Uh, the storyline is, what is the storyline? The game is set in the 27th century. 200 years have passed since Central Earth ended the war that began when humans made contact with aliens. Let's start it. The balance of power, however, is being jeopardised by the militaristic nation Void, who are planning to wage war, and we have to just basically stop them. So let's start a new game. Let's just carry on with that. Let's get stuck in. The enemy is approaching. So we can take out the enemy. Heavy damage, all right, all right, my god. Yes, difficulty level was a bit too high, Gibson. The void ship wins, but do not worry. Mr. Gibson, I can come to collect the next fortress. Capture briefing. Hello, Freddy. Sure, you can. During these five years spent with Brian, you seem to have mastered human speech fairly well. Brian talks with me every day. It's probably the reason for that. Perhaps. Let's, uh, let's skip these, these conversations if we can, because I personally am only really interested in the first person shooter perspective. Now take a look at this. We've got some clever colouring here, we've got some differing to maximise the Mega Drive's palette, which almost makes it look like it's texture mapped on the walls, which is a nice feature. We've got a variety of weapons, homing missile or shot laser, and we can fire them. No, we can't fire homing missiles because we've got nothing to home into on, but we can fire the shot laser. We've got some more ships here, which I think we can board. Oh, we need to go to the great red spot. Alright, no problem little robot. And it is completely polygonal. 
but it looks nice, doesn't it? It looks nice. No ray casting, but the Mega Drive handles it well. It reminds me of the game Driller, which used the Freescape engine and came out on the Spectrum, Amstrad CPC, and machines such as that. And although we're in a ship for most of the game, I think it's still a first person shooter because you can't tell there's a HUD and it plays like a first person shooter. Can we get out of here? How do we get to uh, the place, the place where we can cause chaos? Hello, Mr. Brian. Yep, thank you for restoring my weapons. Uh, where can we go? Can we... Let's try this building over here. Okay, this is where we need to go back to. Good timing, Mr. Brian. Let me give you a brief explanation. Okay, here's uh, the planetary system. Yeah, we're zooming in. Okay. Here's the Void Fortress. Yep. We're going to use it to crash into the fortress to destroy it from the inside. It sounds very much like a Star Wars plot to me. Something happened. Void is attacking us. Unfortunately, it seems there are no survivors. Second attack. Damn, we've lost our Jupiter branch. We have to go on with our plan. No, I've gone back into the... No, no luck so far. Let me get out. All right, so where do I go now? Do I need to go to the ship? Let's go and get a ship. As I've been to the red spot, okay, let's take one of these ships. Alright, look at Jupiter, it looks pretty spectacular. So this bit is in space, so I wouldn't really class this as a first person shooter from this point on, but there are large part first person shooter parts to this game. And there's big space parts as well. And it's game over. So we'll carry on to the next game. So the next game on our list is Corporation. Or as it's known in North America, Cybercop. I believe they renamed it in North America because it... I don't know, I guess they didn't want it to sound like some sort of business simulator. The Corporation was really the first first-person shooter on the Mega Drive. It came out in 1992, so we're talking the same era as Wolfenstein. And it gave Mega Drive owners something just to get stuck into. So we've got this uh, creature on the front. And basically, the Corporation is set in a dark future. This is the actual plot as it is told, and it centers around the Universal Cybernetics Corporation. I'm going to select a new character. I've got Rick, a <laughs> Rick Allen, isn't it? <laughs> I'm thinking of Tim Allen. Ooh. Oh, let's never hear that sound again. Okay, let's buy a gun, let's buy a power pack, and let us begin. Now, this game is... It was quite advanced at the time because rather than ray casting, we've got polygonal a polygonal world here, which makes it rather bland and rather it's just bland, isn't it? You can't aim yourself either. Uh, the a the pointer moves to an enemy as you approach. Now this game first came out on the Amiga in and the Atari ST and DOS, as it happens. But Mega and Atari ST first in 1990, and then DOS in 91, and then it followed on the Mega Drive, and it was more refined by that point, but it still didn't garner much interest, because it's not really up there. I mean, it's not even up there with Wolfenstein, is it? We, haven't got, we have no texturing, we have a slow trudge forward. We've got our protagonist on the left and right hand of the screen wearing a pair of very tight pants, And it's not that much fun. 
But it is exciting in the fact that it's first person. Now, I've covered first person games in my video about non-Doom, non-PC first person shooters. But yeah, you have to forgive my slight obsession with this. It's not even that I'm obsessed with playing them, it's just I'm obsessed with getting this sort of thing running on the hardware. That's what fascinates me the most. Just getting as much out of these machines as possible. And this was quite impressive at the time. And yeah, it's one of Synthetic Dimension's early games. So I mean, at the moment we're just taking out CCTV cameras. It's not really what you want to be doing on a game, is it? It kind of goes through like this. You walk around an office block, you walk through doors. You're responsible for employing a large percentage of a population of London. And it's keystone in the stability of the economy, thus controlling the government's popularity. Blah, blah, blah. What you essentially have to do is... The cybernetic implants... One of the UCC's experiments, and this is the Universal Cybernetics Corporation, has gone crazy and it's wreaking havoc on London. Oh, it's like to see Ed Tro 9. And that's where we come in. We are a national security spy working for an agency known as Zodiac, and we're in assigned to infiltrate and expose the illegal activity in all this, all these shenanigans. But without boring you further, I think we should probably move on to the next game in the Mega Drive roster. Okay, the next game is a vast improvement, and it's developed by Domark and published by Acclaim Entertainment, and it's post-Doom, came out in 1994, known as Battle Frenzy in Germany, and later in American markets, although that was just like 2004 or something, released on both Mega CD and Mega Drive, although there's very little difference between them other than music, and known as Bloodshot in most of Europe, well, the UK, at least, obviously, Germany is still was still quite against using words like blood, etc. in game titles with their strict video game censorship. Anyway, this game, I didn't even know about this when this came out in the 90s, and if I had, I would have been blown away because this is such a massive improvement over what we saw with Corporation. Look at this. The Mega CD, CD version does fix a graphical glitch, which... You know, we can, I think it's, you can see there's glitches present in the Mega Drive version. But other than that, it's just an audio difference. So, we can open this door using a button, and we can pause, and we can fire these massive, massive bullets. But, this is almost full screen. It, it isn't fluid, but it's not bad by any means. And... It's on a Mega Drive. This is a Mega Drive. It didn't have any Mode 7 hardware like the Super Nintendo. I find this phenomenal. And it's not an amazingly fun game. Oh, get the key. I will do. But technologically, it's absolutely tremendous. We've got a minigun here, or a Bren gun, whatever you want to call it. I'm sure there's a difference between the two, but let's not go into that at the moment. We'll also call it a chain gun, or a cannon gun. So many names. Oh, I've got the key. Now we can blast these suckers to oblivion. But yeah, I mean, I didn't know about this. It didn't come out in North America until the millennium. After the millennium, and then it came out on the CD format as Battle Frenzy. So a very late release. But it, be it begs the question, why? I mean, surely Mega Drive owners, Genesis owners, would have been all over it to get hands on this game. It's so close to a Doom game. Yep, frankly, this is one of the best ones for me. But, like all these games, it's trying to copy something and it's not as fun as what it's trying to copy. It's all on the same plane, obviously, like Wolfenstein 3D. All these games were called Doom clones because Doom was the game to have, so it's, it's marketing mar rather than technical. People often point out, oh, it's not a Doom clone, it's a Wolfenstein clone. Well, yeah, it's a Wolfenstein 3D clone if, you know, if you want to get technical. But marketed, it was always marketed as a Doom clone. 
because people cared far more about Doom than they did Wolfenstein 3D. Anyway, the, the storyline in this, let's get to the storyline, it's the year 2049 and the Earth moon base Yaz 67, <laughs> the only way is up, is destroyed by an alien battlecruiser. The Air Federation Starfleet Command retaliates by sending two of its own space battle cruisers against the alien ship with a goal of damaging the ship's defensive and taking as many prisoners as possible. I can't keep reading the story because I can't really see what I'm doing while I'm doing that. But yeah, a little known Mega Drive gen well, Mega Drive really game, as it didn't arrive on cart in the US, which is massively underrated and worth the other go for anyone's money. Especially when it's free in a ROM format and an emulator on the internet. I've got missiles! Holy gun smoke maloli! I am cruising around this level like no one's business. And on that note, I think we should move on to the next Mega Drive first person shooter, don't you? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Come on, this is the one everyone knows about. This is Zero Tolerance, another 1994 video game developed by Technopop, published by Accolade. And this is the one which caught most people's attention as it was heavily marketed as a Doom clone. Although, I mean, technically, it doesn't stand up quite as well as Bloodshot in some regard. Plant Defense Corps. Homeworld date, my word, that's a long number. Mission time, 2230 hours. Location, crisis briefing, insertion craft en route to Space Station Europe 1. Zero tolerance, get ready soldiers for another glorious day in the core. Planet Defense Corps. You're about to do the job you were trained to do. You are absolutely the toughest, meanest soldiers in the corps. Now listen up to the briefing. There's always some alien twang to these, isn't there? Aliens twang. There is still no contact with Planet Defense's Orbital Space Station Europe 1. Here is a recording of a last received transmission. Let's just get to the bloody game. Alright, you can pick your character. Oh, he looks mean. Thomas Grupp. Oh, he's got glasses. Oh, he's got hair. He's got a nice beard. He's got Psycho. Psycho? He looks uh, a bit scared, if I'm honest. Let's go for this guy. All right, so it is smoother. You see, we've got uh, a smoother visuals than Bloodshot. See how the world is, there we go. It's much nicer, it's less jerky, but we've got a much smaller screen. <laughs> Half the screen is taken up by a massive ID badge down the bottom right, because these people had to get inventive with what they filled the screen with to make it look like it wasn't being filled on purpose to take up screen space, which their ID card definitely does. We also have a map, and we have a little status indication. But I saw this in Mean Machine Sega, and I was like, my god, this is like, it was like the end of my time with a Mega Drive. Why have I, why have I moved to Fist? I don't want to Fist these guys. Oh my god, I've, I've ducked. I've, oh, I'm, I'm just punching guys with weapons. Get me out of here. Oh god, that's better. Okay, there's my gun. Take some of this. This guy is pretty tough. He's taken so many hits to the face. He's back to his fists and he's dead. And that is Zero Tolerance. It's made up of 40 levels spanning three separate areas. The Space Warship Europe 1 and Abandoned Merchant Freighter. Oh, we've already talked about that. He's dead, so we can pick another guy. We can pick glasses. Because that's how we identify people around here. By their eyesight status. You can see that there's not much edge going on here. Limitation of the engine. It's just kind of a void into space. But you can't fall off, but nonetheless. Oh, shotgun! Oh, have some of this, mate. I'm gonna blow you onto that planet from here. Anyway, he's dead as well. But you get the idea, this is zero tolerance, and it's probably the best game, best person first person shooter for the Mega Drive. And it the best dedicated first person shooter because we'll get on to something else in just a second. Let's move on. Now anyone who owns this game should know why I've included it in because uh, as it stands it's not immediately obvious why. This is Toy Story the video game and please just bear with me while I enter a cheat 
to get to the level I need to get to. So we get to the start screen and we press A, B, right, A, C, A, down, A, B, right, A. We get a little laugh and then we need to enter a password. This is very complicated, isn't it? We need to enter a password because there's lots of levels in this game and they, are, they do vary quite a lot. So, there we go, mosh. That should take us to here. And then we can use the cheat to advance within each level to the point where I want to get to by pressing start and A. This is very convoluted. Anyway, Toy Story was released by Traveller's Tales, published by Disney Interactive and Sega, and released in on the Mega Drive in 1996. And it's something of a revolution. I mean, look, take a look at this with the old pre-rendered sprites. It looks like a lovely game. But hidden within this game, in the depths, we find a 3D... There we go. Oh yes, look at this. It's not really a first-person shooter, but we're inside the machine, and look how... Look at that. The frame rate is high. It's smooth. This is probably the most... Look how big the screen is. This is probably the most advanced implementation of first person on the Mega Drive, and it's tucked away in Toy Story. I mean, it's not even a shooter, technically, because you can't shoot. You just need to deposit these little guys like so. But it's just, 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 a, just a gem, just tucked away. Obviously, this was later in the Mega Drive years, but... I would have been so excited to find this. They could have made an entire game out of this. The entire Toy Story game could have been like this, but they went one step further and made it a compendium of awesome lift games, like the radio-controlled section and the platforming section. It's such a well-made game. Uh, door. There we go. So we collect all these guys. We can only take one at a time. We take them back. Uh, <laughs> Ah, here we go. Find your way back. It's very, very intricate. It's nice that they put little tunnels in this vending machine for little toys to walk about. If this is the escape mechanism, then it's a very convoluted corridor arrangement. But anyway, we can't spend all day foddling about in here. Is foddling a word? I don't think so. So we will move on to the last, last first person shooter game I have lined up, I believe, of the Mega Drive, so let's get to it. Tech Toy have been working their magic down in Brazil again. Because the Mega Drive held on for such a long time in Brazil, in fact it's still available in some guises in Brazil. But they released various games, including Mortal Kombat 3 for Master System, I believe, such as Duke Nukem 3D on the Mega Drive. And it's not the Duke Nukem we all know and love, but it, it will do. It will do. I mean, this is probably the peak of first person shooting, shooting on this 16 bit platform. It's not half bad. I've done a quick play on this game before, and the graphics are choppy. But of course they're choppy. What do you expect? Come get some! We've got our friendly characters we know and love. The design of the levels is very different, and of course it's on a single plane, much like Wolfenstein 3D. I'm not going to bore you with this, because you may have seen me play it before, but it is just... Impressive. We've got some interlacing, vertical interlacing, as you can see. We've got a familiar HUD. We've got a slightly reduced screen, but you know, to all intents and purposes, it's rather splendid. It's quite difficult, actually. Come on, die! I say difficult. I'm playing absolutely terribly. How many levels has this got? This has got... It's got nine levels, this game. Nine levels. That should keep you occupied, shouldn't it? And if you're in... You know, oh, imagine having this when the Mega Drive was out. I mean, that is probably what it feels like, felt like in Brazil to a lot of people. It must have felt 
amazing. I'm not going to keep playing this because I'm bloody terrible. But I do have one more game. I lied about not having two more games. I, didn't, I, I said I've got one more game. I've got two more games. Let me show you the last game. What's this? Beyond Zero Tolerance. Yes, this is an unreleased game developed by Technopop. It's the sequel to Zero Tolerance, never released. This build is from 1995. It's from June 1995. Voice? Voice on. Sound test, let's not worry about that. But it's nice that a sequel was in development because if any of these games deserves it, it is Zero Tolerance. Exterior, Floating Fortress, Alien, Homeworld, Dusk, Primary, First Strike, Clean and Sweep, Shoot First, Authorization, Granted! Mission time, 1 hour, 23 minutes, 37 seconds, very precise indeed. Let's crack on, shall we? So again, we get to pick from a roster of characters. We have a female, Kirsten Holsted, Code Blinder, Chris Olsen, Victor Reeson, Eric, he's back again. We've got angry looking dude again. Let's be the female protagonist. And here we are. Look, it's very familiar. We've got some different colours. But, I, you know, it's nice to get your hand on these builds, which never were. And this was late in the Mega Drive life. It's, it's not surprising that it was cancelled. Zero Tolerance never sold massively well. So with this even later... You can imagine why it wasn't worthwhile, but it's nice. It's nice to have. It's nice to be able to play it all these years later. Quite garish colours. I'm I'm just fisting people on the floor and not having much success. And my health condition is low. But... And I'm actually dead. But you can pick another character. You can pick from any of these characters and continue on and now oh, it's all the same isn't it i've got a machine gun this time god damn it i lied again i've got another game and yes yes this is wolfenstein 3d on the mega drive it's by some clever genius called gazger 68k and you can find him on the uh, spritemind.net forum and this is the first time I've played this, but apparently this blows the Super Nintendo version out of the window. I believe only the first episode is currently done. Yeah. So look at this. I mean, this is the this is the updated version, which was released just on April the fifteenth, two thousand and seventeen. But look at this. How absolutely incredible is this? This is running on a standard Mega Drive, and it's achieving. 20 frames per second apparently which frankly is incredible we've got digitized sound effects could you ever imagine we've got run mode a mega drive doing this could you ever conceive of this when the mega drive was in its prime imagine if this had come out it would have been i don't know the world would have ended people would have been up in arms it would have been out shocking it is incredible. I'm a bit taken aback by how incredible this game actually is. Uh, so this runs at 256 by 144 resolution. And it uses the same sort of technique as the Duke Nukem tech toy release with the vertical um, interlace interlacing lines. But I mean, it's, it's Duke Nukem. No, it's not Duke Nukem. It's Wolfenstein 3D, isn't it? Amazing. I'm going to probably do a proper video on this because it is worthy of it. Um, in fact, I might stop playing it in a second. Oh, yeah, I might stop playing it about now. There we go. That get brings my Mega Drive first person perspective, first person shooter video to an end. It's dragged on a bit. Apologies for that. But if you've stuck with me so far, hopefully this is a bit of a treat for you. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you later.